Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to I.O. 2016. Did people enjoy the keynote? Yeah? All right. A lot of great stuff there, and hopefully uh, we'll be segueing into interesting ways to use some of what you saw. Um, we're going to be using the Spaces app to collect uh, comments and questions so that we can do that online, save a little time so we don't have to do the Q&A Q here live. So if you haven't already uh, gotten an a update about that, please uh, look it up. It should be um, connected to your I.O. app, I believe, and I think there are supposed to be some signs uh, describing how to use it. But let's just move on. I'm Noah Falstein. I'm chief game designer here at Google. We've got a lot of great software, hardware, services that uh, are really great for game developers that we're going to be showing you this year. And this is a great place to start. Uh, we wanted to have an orientation early at I.O. so that we can point you to some of the other talks and also tell you about some of the cool stuff, as well as make some of our own announcements here. Um, so I'm going to be starting, and then I'm going to pass it on to Ben Frankel here, who's uh, lead PM for uh, our Google Play Game Services. And we're going to finish up with Ina Fuchs, who is with YouTube Gaming. And they'll talk to you a little bit about each of their own specialties. Um, but first, I'm just curious, how many of you are here at I.O. for the first time? OK, quite a few. It's, actually, I think this is the first I.O. where we uh, have a majority of returning people. But it looks like we've got a lot of new faces here. And how many people here are actively involved in the games industry one way or another? OK, pretty much what I expected. So a lot of great stuff for you. And um, before I jump into some of the new stuff, let me put it into perspective a bit. Um, this is actually a computer game I wrote uh, 40 years ago this year. Uh, the code's on the left, and the actual game uh, input and output is on the right. At that point, when we were doing uh, computer games, we basically had sort of glorified electric typewriters. And that was our input and output. You, uh, in this particular game, you had a list of numerical commands you would type in. Just a year or two after that came out, uh, I saw my first video screen and got to code with something that actually controlled the video on the screen. And it was a revelation for me. And of course, right around that time, as video and computers were coming together, it made some of the first video games possible. And those kinds of combinations, we've actually become kind of used to it. But every few years, there's some new dramatic mix of new technologies that can come together in these great ways. You know, For example, we had CD-ROMs and uh, higher color resolution that enabled the kind of modern graphics that we're used to now, or modems and server-based architecture that made MMOs and a lot of the online games possible. And more recently, we have you know, smartphones that are putting those games right in our pocket and connecting us with everybody else in the world. And those are just a few examples. The games industry now is bigger than it's ever been. This is a, a picture of uh, the GDC up in San Francisco from uh, Google's session there this year. Uh, we had um, more people there, I think, than, than um, even fit into this room. But right in this room alone, we've got almost double the amount of people that were at the first game developers conference I went to, the entire conference uh, back uh, 30 years ago. Uh, the games industry has grown 200-fold since then. The, the, uh, sorry, the GDC has grown 200-fold since then. And with good reason, because there are all these wonderful new technologies, platforms beyond just the kind of computers and the dedicated consoles that we're used to. But of course, we've seen browser-based social gaming, downloadable games, uh, a lot of indie games coming that way, and of course, mobile games of all types. And the last couple of years, we've now started to look at virtual reality and wearables. So it's given us all sorts of wonderful opportunities. And here at Google, we make all sorts of hardware, software, and services that help you develop games, grow your audiences, and earn some profits. So today, as we're talking about some of those things, and in the next few days, as you hear from our other groups, I hope you think about the advantages that you get when you combine some of those services together to explore new areas, just as those examples I mentioned in the past of new things coming together like that, to see what kind of new games or even new entire types of games that you can create. And the practical reasons for the experimenting for this, there are a lot of payoffs for you. Uh, it's really, I think, like going through a, a secluded mountain pass. And maybe there'll be a dead end on the other side. Maybe it'll open up into a fertile valley. Maybe there's an entire new continent of possibility. The, the smartphone games, when they came out, are a whole new continent. It's just amazing how big that's gotten. And I think that we have some really great possibilities coming up uh, in those areas, too. 
One of the reasons for doing that is if you combine some new exciting thing like uh, virtual reality with something as big as the billion plus Android uh, smartphone users and make a game that works well in both of those fields, then you've got something that has the appeal and the press attention of virtual reality, but the huge market of the existing smartphones out there. And it's not easy to do that sort of thing, but it's certainly possible. And the payoff is really worthwhile. So that's just using some existing technologies. Let's consider some of the new ones that are being shown in the next few days. There's a lot for you to see in these next few days, so I've made a couple of slides here, and this doesn't include all of the talks that I think will be of interest to game developers, but I tried to call some of the ones that I think uh, you'd find interesting. This first page is some of the upcoming talks about virtual reality and our Project Tango devices that are quite exciting. It's not an exhaustive list, and some sessions may move around at the last minute, so please check your apps and uh, the signs to make sure that everything's in the right time and place. And there's a lot going on with the game uh, development and distribution side of things as well. Firebase is something you should look into. It's a great way to leverage the Google advantage that combines our backend services seamlessly in your game. And uh, then tomorrow and Friday, there's some more uh, interesting talks. You might want to uh, look into things like our Android N discussions or some of the Firebase fundamentals or AdMob and how you could use that to monetize your games. Um, but let me make a few specific announcements that you uh, may be hearing about in some other places as well. Uh, first, I'm really happy to be able to uh, be making the, the first announcement of the donation API. In the words of the developers, uh, what if gamers everywhere could save the real world right from within your app, powered by Google? This is the donation API. It's made for gamers and generosity, and it uses everything that we've learned that users like when they donate. It's got in-app donations, automatic payment processing and billing. There are no fees and no spam. And it has the ability for you, the developer, to search and support any US-based nonprofit. It's brought to you by the same group, the Social Good Group, that has powered donations for Google.org and the refugee crisis and the newly launched donation cards on YouTube. And I've got some cards describing this that I'll uh, put out in back later for people to take as they leave. Uh, very exciting stuff. I'm really happy to be part of a, a company that's thinking not only of entertaining people, but helping them at the same time. Next, let me suggest that you check out our app ads for games. Uh, making games fun is really essential to success, and so is identifying which customers are best for your game. So take a look at app ads for games to see how you can use powerful signals from Search, YouTube, and the Play Store to find the best players for your games. And then finally, earlier this year, we announced our app streaming service, and that will be described on stage six later today. This is somewhat different than the instant apps that were uh, announced at the keynote. Uh, they have similar functions, but they're used for different things, and the app streaming people are great for letting people try out games by streaming them online without actually having to download the app onto your device. Um, it works pretty much like uh, videos are streamed on YouTube and lets player try your game without having to first download it, which obviously can be a big advantage to getting them up and running quickly. Okay, so let's think about how some of those advantages can boost your games and bring them to the next level. So here while you're at I.O., you'll be learning about some of the other tools we have available to developers. And I'm urging you to really think about how you'd combine them, because as I've been saying, if you bring them together in new ways, it can really help you launch new creative adventures that draw on a really diverse palette and increase your chances to both get noticed and reach new heights. So let me give you a few thought experiments to show you the kinds of things I, I mean to get started. What if you had a game about exploring the universe that was played by thousands who were in a single shard together? You'd want to have complex calculations, and that could be done with Google Cloud Platform. But the players could view it on their phones or use our cast services that you can find out about here to cast it on through their TVs so that they can actually see their televisions with a starscape and pick out their nest, next destination that way. Or you might have heard, uh, I'm curious how many people have seen our, our Chrome uh, experiment game, Lightsaber Escape? OK, a fair number of you, great. I thought that was a really exciting way of showing the advantage of combining what we can do with Chrome with what you can do with your, your phone to control a lightsaber on the screen. But it uses, as most phones do, uh, three degrees of freedom in orientation. 
Imagine using one of our Project Tango devices or one of the new phones that Lenovo will be making later this year so that as you're using your lightsaber to deflect bolts, it's not just seeing which uh, orientation it's in, but you can move it side to side, up and down, and much like they do in the movies, uh, send those blaster bolts back at the uh, stormtroopers. Uh, I think that might open up a whole new type of action-adventure game where you're controlling the, what you're seeing on your computer screen with your phone, so that can be a great interface for you. And finally, I'll suggest TensorFlow, which has been getting a lot of uh, news, and consider how that open source machine learning tool might be used in conjunction with something like Google Earth to create a new kind of game that fused alternate reality gaming with massively multiplayer games. Uh, imagine, for example, that you have a world-spanning game that has procedurally generated objectives all across Google Earth so that uh, TensorFlow and machine learning can help learn each player's preferences and make objectives that are local to where they are and yet fit into the, the kind of world information that you can pull in with our services. So those are just a few suggestions. Uh, as you listen to Ben and Ina next, and as you go out uh, for the next two and a half days and hear about the other game talks, I'd like you to consider how you might want to use some of those services, any of the ones that have been mentioned or new ones that we may not have even thought of that can be used by gamers. That's happening all the time. Go out there, create some groundbreaking new games or supercharge your existing games. And speaking of supercharging, I'm going to turn it over now to Ben Frankel, PM of our Google Play Game Services Group, to tell you more about that multi-powered service. Thank you. Thank you, Noah, for the intro. Hi, I'm Ben Frankel. I'm a product manager on the Play Games team. And our mission is to provide developers the tools and services they need to create great games and make money while they're doing it too. Very important component. And we launched Play Game Services three years ago at this event at I.O. And we launched with just the basics. We had achievements, we had leaderboards, we had a multiplayer stack, we had a cloud safe solution. And since then, we've become the fastest growing game network ever. Today, hundreds of millions of users sign into Play Game Services every month and 50% of the top 500 games on Play are integrated. But since then, since the initial launch, and over the years, the needs of developers have substantially evolved, and we've had to evolve along with them. And Play Game Services has expanded to include advanced features like video recording, live operations, and a healthy dose of predictive analytics. And slide, let's get, there we go. So before I go into the specific features and case studies that I want to talk about today, I thought it would be useful to take a step back and provide some context for what we're trying to do through the lens of the game development process. So to start off on the left here, and I can barely see things because of the awkward angle here. So, uh, but starting off on the left, a typical game, a typical game will start off with something like a brainstorming session. I've heard a lot of game developers have a game jam where people vote on whatever concept they think is the best. For some, maybe it's a eureka moment they have in the bathtub, though for me personally, I prefer mine in the shower. And once you've locked in on an amazing idea, it's time to take it one step further with a prototype. And after you've exhausted your most expedient testing options, like your coworkers, your friends, your family, maybe a distant cousin somewhere, you need to expand your audience by launching a beta program or soft launching your game. And after iterating a while, and you're confident your game is awesome and has a chance to monetize well, you're ready to launch and promote your game to the public. Hooray, right? <laughs> but these days, launching your game is just the start of the journey for a game developer. You need to continue to invest in acquiring new users, and you have to retain those users by keeping your community engaged, tailoring and tuning your content to different player segments, and running live events. Those are all very important components. 
But today I'm going to focus on just three things that Play and Play combined with other Google products are doing to drive game developer success. First, we're going to talk about how we can help you find the right users at each stage of the game development process. Then we'll cover how we can help you tailor and tune your game to different player segments. And lastly, we'll talk about how we can help you harness the creativity and enthusiasm of your gaming community to deepen, to deepen player engagement. So let's start off with how Play can help you find the right users. This is a very important part for everybody's business. So at this year's I.O., we're introducing the early access section to the Play Store. And as I mentioned earlier, once you've built your initial prototype and iterated a bit, it's important to get feedback from the largest audience possible before you launch your game publicly. And that's what the early access section is for. Early access will feature exciting games that are still in development so that early, adop early adopters and influencers are able to discover and try out your game. And importantly, it also gives them an opportunity to give you private feedback. This is the perfect way to experiment and fine to your game before it's finally released to everybody. So when you're finally ready to launch, you'll need to promote your game and find a way to drive installs. And for those of you who are indie developers, you'll be excited to hear that we've added a new way to highlight you and your games in the Indie Corner collection on the Play Store that we launched earlier this year at GDC. The Indie Corner is dedicated to highlighting truly amazing and unique games that users love. And here's how the program works. So first, you have to make a great game. It all starts there. And then you need to submit your game to participate in the Indie Corner program at this URL that you can see on the left-hand side of the screen there. I guess you're right, sorry, uh, right-hand side. Anyhow, it's g.co forward slash Indie Corner submission. And from there, a panel selects games for featuring in the, or in the Indie Corner collection. It's simple. However, there's more to the Indie Corner program than just the featuring, though that's obviously a big benefit. It also serves as a way for us to have the opportunity to help indie developers understand and improve their game performance. And I'll walk you through an example of something we did with a partner of ours, Spring Loaded. So when we started working with Spring Loaded, they had just launched, soft launched their game, Last Vikings. And uh, they gave us an early build, and we tested it extensively, and we wrote up a detailed analysis of some things they could do to improve the game, how they could best integrate play game services, and some tweaks they could make to improve monetization and retention. Then Spring Loaded implemented every single one of our recommendations. It was, it was extremely impressive to see it all come together really nicely, and the results for them have been phenomenal. So after they made a few tweaks here and there to their game, they were able to double average revenue per paying user and make huge improvements to retention. They, in fact, doubled their day seven retention on the back of the work that we did with them. And in James Bernard's own words, the Indie Corner program has been invaluable to us in helping us believe that as a small indie, we can actually make it on our own. It has been a transformative experience for them. And uh, hopefully you'll all be excited to hear tomorrow the Indie Corner collection will be live on the store, so don't forget to check that out. So let's say you've assumed for a moment that you've found the right users. Now you'll want to keep them coming back to your game by turning it into an ongoing service you deliver to players. And important, a very important piece of that is being able to dynamically tailor content to different player segments. And in this case study, what we'll cover is how a developer has combined the player stats API with AdMob's rewarded ads to increase ad revenue while not negatively impacting in-app purchases. Because that was the goal, the original stated goal, and they were able to successfully do that. 
So let me go through the story here. So developer Invent Venture integrated spend prediction into their game Galactic Empire. It's a great game. They used the spend prediction to determine whether or not to show ad mob rewarded ads. And here's how it works for them. If a player is predicted to spend, they don't show the rewarded ad option. If a player is predicted to spend, uh, to not spend, sorry, they will see rewarded ads. And they implemented this about a month ago, and in the short time since then, they've been able to increase ads revenue by 10% without any negative effect, uh, impact on in-app purchases. In fact, they've seen a slight increase in them. And it's a great case study, and every developer, large or small, can go out today and combine the player stats API and AdMob in this way to improve the success of their game. And since we launched the player stats API last year, we've continued to invest in new predictions to make the API even more powerful. And we're excited to announce the launch of two new predictions in the coming weeks. The first is a prediction of how much someone is likely to spend in the next 28 days. And the second is a prediction of whether or not someone is likely to become a high spender. And we couldn't be more excited to see what creative things you'll end up doing with these new predictions. So let's turn our attention to, help, to how Google and Play can help you harness the energy and creativity of your gaming community to deepen player engagement. And so one thing that we've recently launched is Play Games, Gamer IDs, and Avatars. And these are a great way for your players to create their own gaming persona and express themselves. I mean, most of the people I know don't really want to play games as their real identity. I don't want to be known as Ben Frankel and all the potentially strange games that I play. And in fact, I've, I've used the same ID, my secret nerd name, Kaldorf here, which you can see on the screen, uh, since I created my Battle.net account to play StarCraft a really, really long time ago. I was no longer Ben Frankel, computer science TA and college student. I was the Zerg slaying Kaldorf the Conqueror. Right? And it was very satisfying to carry that persona to all of my games going forward. And with Gamer IDs, which we launched earlier in the year, I can, in fact, take this persona with me to every game I play. And as developers, you can actually tap into this as well. You can find out what a Gamer ID is when somebody signs in. So if you have a game where you have your equivalent of a Gamer ID or a Gamer tag, you can pre-populate that field with the ID that I've chosen. And that should speed up the flow of people into your game. So now, I want to talk about how the video recording API in YouTube can help developers amplify their community's impact. So for a bit of background, late last year, we made it possible for users to record their gameplay with the Google Play Games app. And after an extended early access program, today, we are excited to announce that in the coming weeks, the video recording API will be available to all developers so that players can bring up this video recording experience directly from your games. In addition, players will also soon have the option to live stream their gameplay to YouTube. So we've seen a lot of excitement for video recording from the smallest developers all to the very largest we have on the platform. And more than a dozen games during the EAP program, the Early Access program, have already launched an integration with the Video Recording API, and they're on the store today, so you can go check them out. But I wanted to walk you through one particularly powerful, exemplary integration of the Video Recording API. And Flare Games has just such an integration in their game, Dawn of Steel. And here is how it works. So before you launch a raid and invade another base and blow things up, you come to the screen on your left. So uh, there we go. OK. And on this screen, you can see that red button has launch written in the middle of it. You click that button, you launch the raid, and fun ensues. Just to the left of that red button is a camera icon. And if you click that camera icon, it brings up the video recording overlay. And then from that overlay, you have all the controls you need to mute your mic, turn off and on the forward-facing camera, 
as well as, of course, start and stop the video recording. And once a recording is complete, you can edit the video and upload it directly to YouTube. And you can see here on your right, in this screenshot here, that I've clipped this video a little bit in the editing mode. And you can also see that we've helpfully pre-populated the title as well as the description so that players can share their replays faster. In the words of Flare Games' John Howard, the video recording API helped activate our community by enabling players to create a Let's Play style video in a matter of minutes with minimal effort. And it's not just minimal effort for the players, it's actually a very easy integration to do. And many of the developers we talked to said it's taken about a day to do it. So it's a big ROI for you guys. Uh, but what particularly excited me was how Dawn of Steel incorporated the video recording API as a foundational element of their global replay competition. And in the view of the folks at Flare Games, the replay share function was the perfect tool to kick off the global competition and let the community show off their skills. That is exactly the intent behind the video recording API and what we wanted developers to do with it to create these kind of amazing experiences where people can show off their skills. Um, they also did a really, really good job of incorporating YouTube's celebrity platform into their marketing campaign for the competition. And here's how it worked. To kick off the competition, they worked with YouTube celebrity MasterOff to create a video tutorial on how to use the video recording feature. It's a really impressive video, and I thought I would take the opportunity to show it to you. So cue awesome video and audio. What's up, everyone? MasterOff here with an awesome free-to-play mobile game, Dawn of Steel. With the game's replay feature, you can save your battles and share them with others. To do so, simply toggle the record button and hit play before battle commences. When you've destroyed an enemy base with your squad, stop the recording, check out your raid, and share your videos with the world. Easy as that. Makes me want to record video replay right now. But I'll wait. Um, so it was a really great video, high production value, and I think a very effective way of driving awareness about the competition. And to further amplify this corresponding marketing campaign, they had Master of announce the competition on his Master of Gaming channel, which has millions of subscribers and is a great way to drive awareness about the game. And to cap it off, when the competition ended, Master of then announced the winner and showed the winning replay on his channel. This is exactly the type of coordinated marketing campaign supported by video replays that every game developer should aspire to. And I was blown away when I heard about what they were doing. And next, sl cue, next slide, please. There we go. So to recap, play games. Whoa, OK. Well, now we're too far. All right. And we also, we're ruining the slides, back. <laughs> no, 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 wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Uh, I think you want to go to slide 38, uh, just a, or slide 28. Um, bear with us for a moment here. We're experiencing technical difficulties. And you can also see all the things I'm saying on there. That's super helpful. <laughs> all right, so to recap, Play games and other Google services can be combined in powerful ways to help you find the right users, tailor and tune game experiences to different player segments, and harness the energy and creativity of your gaming community to deepen player engagement. And now I'll hand it off to Ina, who you've seen some sneak preview of her slides already, <laughs> to talk about YouTube gaming and the, how the YouTube platform has been used to drive developer success. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my name is Ina, and I work on the YouTube gaming team as a partnerships manager. So that means I 
manage or look after some of our top YouTube gaming creators, like Master of, and gaming publishers across Europe. And today I'm here to tell you about the amazing, innovative, creative, and powerful community that we have on YouTube gaming, and how you as a developer can play an active part in it. But to truly understand the phenomenon of gaming on YouTube, I want to share a personal story. So, spoiler, <laughs> this is me and my brother when we were little kids. And I guess the socks and the sandals kind of show that I was born and raised in Germany. <laughs> Though, thanks mom and dad. Um, anyhow, my older brother and I would actually spend hours and hours of playing Monkey Island together, which is why for me today, it's even a greater honor to be speaking here as Noah is one of the co-developers of my childhood game. So in YouTube terms, I'm fangirling a little bit here. <laughs> we'll take a selfie later. So back then, it was usually me watching my brother play and, you know, I was throwing in comments here and there. He wouldn't really pass on the controller ever. But also, to me, he was just the greatest Monkey Island player in the world, and also the only one I knew. Um, but I was just being greatly entertained. And, you know, I kept coming back into his room to watch more and more of his gameplay on the few games that he had bought with his pocket money. So. We were, if you think about it, our own little gaming community, even though quite isolated. Now, also on the game development side, the industry back then was quite isolated. So developers and publishers often had no clue what was going to happen the day of the release of their game. And players wouldn't really know what they were going to see until they really bought the game, unless they had maybe read something about it in a game-specific magazine or heard about it from friends. But that was pretty much it. Now, the future of gaming, as I had imagined it back then, where I could just kind of watch any game I could think of, is already happening today. And funnily enough, I find myself working at the very core of it. With YouTube, we're surfacing all of these little gaming communities and bring them together without limitations. So you see, while it was really great watching my brother play, I could have never imagined a world where I could just choose between different types of personalities to be entertained by and seamlessly switch between games and even get recommendations to discover new games based on my preferences. And anyone can do all of that today on YouTube. YouTube has really reshaped the video game landscape over the past decade. And to fully understand how, it's important to look at the incredible amount of innovative and creative talent that we have on the platform, who are often at the tip of the spear when it comes to creating new formats, inspiring trends, and establishing audience building strategies. Creativity has gone way beyond just gameplay. So today on YouTube, you can find everything from the most engaging and entertaining Let's Play video to 360 degrees animations of games, to acapella songs of your favorite game soundtrack, to animated series, to even baking videos of your favorite game character as a muffin. So people find themselves more interested and curious about gaming content than ever before. And the community is constantly diversifying, in which gamers are not only players anymore. And every month, people watch billions of hours of gaming content on YouTube. So, Gaming on YouTube has grown so strongly that last year in the summer, we took a step further and we launched YouTube Gaming, providing a dedicated home for users to get connected to the games, players, and culture that matter to them with videos, live streams, and actually the biggest community of gamers on the web, all in one place. So if you haven't seen the YouTube Gaming app, I highly encourage you to download it to your phone. Or if you are on desktop, you can access by visiting gaming.youtube.com. 
Now, gaming videos have gained a lot of traction over the past decade, to the point where YouTubers and their videos are playing a crucial role in the economics of the gaming industry. Creators' videos are one of the major factors influencing which games get more exposure and find success. So we've seen an incredible amount of movement on the developer and publisher side. One example of this is Surgeon Simulator, an indie game by Bossa Studios. Now, this is a story from back in 2013 and a thumbnail from a PewDiePie video. PewDiePie is actually our biggest YouTuber on the platform by subscribers. He uploads mostly gaming videos, and to date, his channel has reached more than 44 million subscribers, and to date, he has reached more than 12 billion views on his videos. So I reached out to Felix PewDiePie to get approval to use this image in my presentation, and his only comment to it was, oh my god, Ina, what an ancient image. So considering three years as ancient, you kind of get a sense of how fast the industry is moving here. Surgeon Simulator is a game by Boston Studios, an indie game developer in London. And so back in 2013, they uploaded this game to their Game Jam side without really having any expectations. Then Felix, also known as PewDiePie, found the game, loved it, and he decided to make a video about it. Shortly after he uploaded the video, the Game Jam site crashed because there was an overload of PewDiePie fans accessing the site to download the game. And to make things worse, <laughs> other YouTubers followed and created videos about Surgeon Simulator, which kind of uh, really skyrocketed the game. And to put it in Boss Studio's words, the traction in the first week was insane. This exposure and momentum has led to Surgeon Simulator becoming the fastest ever greenlit game on Steam. And they now find themselves with an established IP that has sold over 3 million units across five different platforms. Way to go for an indie game. And over time, Basta Studios has become really involved with the YouTube community to a point where, in a later version of their game, the Alien version, they named the Organs after some of their biggest YouTube supporters. I know that's very flattering, but that's kind of just the fun of YouTube. Another great example of how they work with the YouTube community is from their game I Am Bread. I Am Bread is a very fun action-adventure simulation game where the player is in control of a slice of bread, and the ultimate goal is to get the bread toasted. Turns out, there was a bug in the game, which made the bread float around in zero gravity. And, of course, YouTubers discovered that bug and had a lot of fun with it. The YouTube community actually loved that bug so much that there were hundreds of videos produced around the floating bread. It really became a thing. So instead of fixing the bug, Bossa Studios really heard the community. They built the zero gravity mode into the game and released it as a free update. So today, you can find many, many fun Let's Plays on YouTube around the space bread. So guess what? Not only indie game developers are working with the YouTube community. GTA is a very popular game on YouTube. YouTubers just love recording their gameplay, and it's an amazing game to develop storytelling. So Rockstar, the publisher of GTA, wanted to further fuel that creativity and enable creators to share more of their experiences in an entirely new way. So they integrated the Rockstar editor into GTA 5. It's a feature built within the game that lets players record, edit, and ultimately share highlight moments from their gameplay using different camera angles, filters, audio, and so on. Players can record gameplay footage with only the press of a single button within the game. There's even a director mode where you can stage your own scenes and create custom moments. Players can choose from different story mode characters. They can choose location, time, day, and even the weather. 
When done editing, they can export directly to YouTube, and we've seen some amazing results coming through. We see more collaboration between developers, YouTube creators, and the community than ever before, and it's very exciting. Going back to PewDiePie, he recently released his own game, PewDiePie Legend of the Brofist, in conjunction with Outer Minds, a video game development company. Now, in the process of developing the game, he constantly worked with his fans and his community and got their input. He shared sneak peeks of levels and walkthroughs, and they could give their feedback through YouTube comments. They also had a say on which other YouTubers should be included in the game as characters. And the community even voted on the name of the game. The feedback from the community was so mind-blowing that the game became number one in the app charts right after launch. But we also see developers taking a stab at becoming content creators themselves, and quite successfully so. Miniclip, for example, has done a tremendous job on their main official channel, Agario. They are not only collaborating with YouTubers and curating community content, they also host regular live streams, bringing in the community manager and feature guest players on the official channel. So this very inclusive and very consistent content strategy has led to the Miniclip uh, Agario channel reach over 1 million subscribers within only six months of launch, which is quite impressive. What's great about producing your own official content is that you can then link directly from the YouTube watch page to your game through what we call cards. Cards are clickable from any device and can either link to your official website or, in the case of a mobile game, directly to the Google Play Store and drive downloads of the game. Additionally, the game pages on YouTube Gaming automatically pull together all the great content that is being produced around your game into one place. So that's actually a great place for you as a developer to discover all the creative talent out there that's already creating videos and live streams around your IP and get in touch. If you've released a game, I highly recommend you to check out your own game page on YouTube Gaming. And I've also included a link in our, into our space for this session, and Noah will explain a little bit about what that is again. Um, on how you can provide us with information around your game for these pages. Or you could just Google provide YouTube with game data and you will find that link. And speaking of more product innovations, let's talk mobile. Now, we've looked at mobile gaming and we just see skyrocketing growth. Um, if, looking at those numbers, it was very clear to us that we not only wanted to make it an awesome experience to watch people play from a mobile phone, but also to share your own mobile gameplay and broadcast it to the world. Now, Ben has already told you about the amazing stuff you can do around integrations within your game, but we want to also be inclusive of any type of game. So part of our update to the YouTube Gaming app, as well as to Google, Google Play Games, as Ben mentioned earlier, was mobile capture. Mobile capture on YouTube gaming is drop-dead simple. You can select any game on your phone and just tap the record button and start capturing. You can choose to add video of yourself, uh, sound via the mic, and you know, adding to the fun of it, you can live stream all of that gameplay directly to your channel on YouTube already today. So really your limit to your mobile gameplay recording is only your phone's battery now. And speaking of live streaming, we're building out amazing features on that front. As I said earlier, we see constant innovation around formats on YouTube. And more and more creators are now connecting to their fans real time through live streaming. Also, developers and publishers often use live streams to make announcements, to host tournaments, to host community streams around their launches and really engage with their fans through live chat. Life is becoming an ever-immersive experience, and we even recently announced 360 degrees live streaming. 
It's a very exciting era to be in today in the games industry. And there's so many cool products available to the people who love and make games. In the past 15 minutes or so, I was only able to give you kind of a glimpse into this world. And there's so many more inspirational stories from games that have become really big and known through the power of the YouTube community. The discovery of games has really changed, and you don't need to spend millions of dollars of marketing budget anymore to get exposure. So I highly encourage you to play an active role in our community by embracing the content that's out there or creating your own, by really listening to the community's feedback, maybe even including them in the development of your game. It all really boils down to making great games and to the combined passion that we share for games. And with that, I want to hand back over to Noah. Thank you, Ina. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope this has been uh, intriguing, inspiring. I hope you can see some ways you can use these services in your games. Please go out there and make some great games with our technology and let us know uh, what you've done so we can show you up here next year. Thank you very much.